Following local rapper Shoddy Lowe early this morning when his car crashed on an I-285 exit ramp near Cascade Road. It was around 2 o'clock this morning, just after 2 o'clock this morning. Fulton County Police tell us Carlos Walker crashed his white Audi around uh, 285 near Cascade Road area after leaving a nightclub with two friends. Now, Fulton County Police say the Audi swerved off the road, struck a tree, overturned, and then caught on fire. He hugged me, told me love me. He left. Musician Front Street says those were the last words Shotty said to him before the wreck after he left the Blue Flame Lounge early Wednesday morning. Yeah, there's a growing uh, crowd of mourners here behind us in front of the ORG studios off Donald Lee Hollowell Parkway. And uh, just blocks away, we heard from loved ones who say the last few days of Shotty Lowe's life really affected this neighborhood. Dad touched a lot of people, man. He was humble, genuine, that's all I know. His 11 children mourning the loss of their father and grateful the world is mourning with them. The support that we did get, I appreciate that. All the real genuine love. And I know my dad looking down smiling about that. September 20th, 2016. Atlanta, Georgia rapper Carlos Rico Walker known globally as Shoddy Low, went to have a good night out at a gentleman's club he normally frequents, named the Blue Flame Lounge. Shoddy Low, seen as an icon in the city, always received love from patrons in the past, once he's present. This time was no different. His childhood friend recalls that night, his outing was to a party hosted by another Atlanta rapper, Young Jock. Shotty Lowe had just left this neighborhood club. Everybody just left Young Jock. Yeah. Party last night, you understand me? While there, Shotty Lowe was oblivious to what lie ahead for him just hours later. He was living the final moments of his life without even knowing it. Video clips uploaded to his social media showed the rapper enjoying the festivities at the club soaking up the love and energy around him. The night was slowly winding down. The party was a highlight to experience. The time ticked away. 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 p.m., 1 a.m. September 21st, 2016. Shawty Lowe is preparing to leave. Maybe something felt off at the moment in his head. Or maybe it was a regular goodbye gesture to his friends. Around 1.30 a.m., he would give his friend and fellow artist, Front Street, a hug and told him he loved him before leaving. He hugged me, he told me love me, he left. Musician Front Street says those were the last words Shotty said to him before the wreck after he left the Blue Flame Lounge. The unimaginable was about to happen just 30 minutes later. Shotty Lowe would get into his vehicle, a 2016 Audi, with two other female occupants, Deshandria and Destinas, and left the Blue Flame Lounge. Around 2.10 a.m., Shawty Lowe was on Interstate 285. The car was accelerating at a speed that prompted the female occupants to request Shawty Lowe to drive at a more moderate pace. In fact, reports state that moment before the fatal accident, they pleaded with Shawty Lowe to slow down, but the rapper refused. 2.20 a.m., Shawty Lowe exited on the Cascade Road ramp, and that's when tragedy struck. Shawty Lowe somehow went behind the guardrail, onto the grass, and then down the embankment, losing control of the vehicle. This sent them into a fishtail, as described by the two female occupants, after which the car struck a tree, overturned, and caught a blaze. Morning. Just after 2 o'clock this morning, Fulton County Police tell us Carlos Walker crashed his white Audi around uh, 285 near Cascade Road area after leaving a nightclub with two friends. Now, Fulton County Police say the Audi swerved off the road, struck a tree, overturned, and then caught on fire. Shawty Lowe would be ejected from the vehicle before the car came to a halt, sending him flying, ending his life at the scene. The female occupants in a stroke of luck, or some may say, miracle, was able to escape from the burning vehicle. At the driver who Dish Nation did confirm was low, 
uh, lost control of the vehicle, struck a tree, and that caused the vehicle to overturn and catch on fire. Now, Lowe was ejected from the vehicle and died here on the scene. There were two other people in the car, two women. They actually were able to escape the car. Police officers would arrive on the scene to find the lifeless body of Shawnee Lowe, along with the two female occupants. Around the crime scene was burnt money as Shawnee Lowe had a considerable amount of cash on him at the time of the accident. The female occupants involved in the accident were allowed to recover a quantity of the funds still on Shawnee Lowe, after which they were transported to the Grady Memorial Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Was it as simple as Shawnee Lowe losing control of the vehicle while driving too fast? Or was there some other factor at play? The medical examiner at the scene of the crime may have uncovered evidence that suggests the latter. According to reports, at the scene, they found a pill bottle labeled promethazine with the rapper's name printed on the label with hydrocodone and oxycodone inside. Medically, promethazine is commonly used to treat allergies, while hydrocodone and oxycodone are painkillers. But in the world of hip hop, they are often the source of addiction for many rappers, inducing the pill to get through the trauma and loss of the lifestyle they lived or for the purpose of enjoying themselves at concerts and parties. The concoction where these ingredients are key is known by many names like Lean, Wook, Purple Drink, and Scissor, among others. The drink has taken over the lives of many mainstream artists and even taken the lives of some too addicted to its taste and effects. Shout out to the homie Bunk. Oh Some speculate that Shoney Lowe's night out with these pills might have impaired his sense of thinking. Mixed with the speed the vehicle was going in, losing control becomes much more feasible. Sadly, if that were the case, it was a mistake he didn't get the chance to learn from. The medical examiner would release official documents indicating that he died due to blunt force trauma to the head but also stated alcohol may be another factor that might have led to the unfortunate accident that claimed Shawty Lowe's life. Shawty Lowe's body and his mangled vehicle was removed from the scene that would soon become known to the world. Initially, the news broke online informing the public about the rapper's untimely passing. Many media sites and journalists reported the accident was due to a hit and run as information was still scarce. But soon, after the correct information was gathered and released, the news sent a shockwave of mourning through the music industry and the city of Atlanta. We have breaking news. An exit ramp on I-285 is back open after a deadly crash in South Fulton County. We're learning more this morning about the man. The internet became flooded with condolences and heartbreak over the tragedy. But the ones that were left to go on through the most were his children. Shawty Lowe had a large family and held them dear to his heart. 11 children across 10 women. Shawty Lowe had a lot of lives to provide for, but he always ensured he was a father that was present and in his children's lives. Shawty Lowe had a lifestyle outside of being a rapper that many never saw. The time he spent with his children meant a lot to him. And in those moments, he wasn't Shawty Low. He was Carlos Walker, making sure to take care of his kids and having fun together as their dad. His daughter recalls moments about their dad. And it's clear Shawty Low made sure to steer them down a path that he wasn't able to walk due to his struggles and environment. Those girls telling me today that uh, their father really pushed them to finish high school and go to college and finish high school, things that he did not do. They say he always made a big deal of making sure that they did so. They told me that that's a dream that they plan to fulfill for their father. Shawty Lowe always instilled in them to gain an education and never give up on their dreams and left them with memories they can always cherish. What do you want people to remember about your father? That he was a happy person. He helped so many people. 
that he loved his kids, he loved his family, he loved being here, going home. He always taught us to never quit on our dreams, always to um, go for it, always to make sure you go to school, make sure you go to college, make sure you go for with anything you want to achieve in life. Shawty Lowe never made his kids feel like they were alone. Well, the times where we always went to Six Flags, I was always scared to get on the rides, and he always told me, I'm going to be right here with you. And even with his hectic, famous lifestyle, he did his best to be at milestones like their graduation to support and cheer them on. My favorite memory of my father is coming to my graduation, um, just seeing the smile on his face when um, I'm finally graduated from high school. What's even more heartbreaking about the tragedy was that just a few days before he passed, Shawty Lo and his family had to bear the weight of losing his father. Their last photo together was one at the funeral. The girl shared this video of the good times and described how he made each child feel special and loved. They also shared this photo, one of the last they took as a group with him, just last Saturday at his own father's funeral. Just so crazy because we just buried my grandfather this past Saturday and now my daddy's dead and it's just a lot going on, a lot of grievance, a lot of pain. His friend, Sean Robinson, recalls the series of losses. She was like family, so she too had to endure the hurt of the family loss back to back. It was just days prior she recalls sending him a message for his father's funeral. Now her, like many others, like his son, are left with a hole in their hearts. But days earlier, childhood friend Sean Robinson sent him a message after receiving this photo from her sister. Shadi Lowe had just buried his own father. And for him to leave today, I'm crushed. It's hard. It's very hard for me. Shadi Lowe accomplished a lot with his time as a rapper. Coming from a background of a broken home, he had it rough in his childhood. His mother was a user and his father was absent, so his grandmother took up the strain of raising him. But when she passed, Shawty Lowe and his sister was left in the streets, and he had to resort to criminal activities to survive. You know, my grandmother raised me, so, you know, and, you know, we didn't have nothing. That's the only thing my grandmother made sure that, you know, we was clean and we went to school and then went to war, but when she died in 93, and left me and my sister in the streets, you know what I'm saying? So I used to be, I had to do whatever they, they eat, you know what I'm saying? I, Shawty Lowe would have to make a decision, change for the better or lose his freedom. Luckily, he turned his life around for his family and focused his attention on music, proving to all that said he couldn't make it that they were wrong. And it's like when the police were closing in on me, it's just like I just said something. I made invest my mind into this music, and I took a gamble, man, you know, and here it is. That's why I made that song with my album, man. It feels good to be here. Shawty Lowe's funeral would be held on Saturday, October 1st, 2016. And not only did the city show out for their icon, before he was buried, Shawty Lowe's body was taken to the club he frequented that last saw him alive and well, the Blue Flame Lounge. Shawty Lowe leaves behind a legacy that will forever leave his name engraved in hip-hop's history books, rising to the top of his solo career with his breakout single, They Know. He was also one of the founding members of the iconic group D4L, aka Down for Life, that had the viral single Laffy Taffy. It was no surprise he won the MySpace Music Rookie of the Year at the BET Hip Hop Awards. Rest in peace, Shouty Low.